This is the story of Jesus. And you're going to see it come alive before your eyes. And so what we want to do is now invite the Holy Spirit to be present with us, to in, be involved in our story and be involved in our lives. Let's pray together. Oh, Lord, we thank you so much for this opportunity. We thank you for this season. Uh, happy birthday, Lord. Now we ask that your Holy Spirit would fall upon this place, fall upon these people. Fill us up, Lord. Bring this story to life in a wonderful new way for each and every one of us tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. A Smithville Christmas pageant. This is how the birth of Jesus, the Messiah, came about. His mother Mary was engaged to Joseph, but before they came together, she was found to be pregnant through the Holy Spirit because Joseph, her husband, was faithful to the law and yet did not want to expose her to public disgrace. He had in mind to divorce her quietly. But after he had considered this, an angel of the Lord appeared to him in a dream and said, Joseph, son of David, do not be afraid to take Mary home as your wife, for what is conceived in her is from the Holy Spirit. She will give birth to a son, and you are to give him the name Jesus, because he will save his people from their sins. All this took place to fulfill what the Lord had said through the prophet. The virgin will conceive and give birth to a son, and they will call him Emmanuel, which means God with us. I'll ask you to please stand and turn in your hymnals, the blue hymnal to 172. We will sing verses one and six. In those days, Caesar Augustus issued a decree that a census should be taken of the entire Roman world, and everyone went to their own town to register. So Joseph also went up from the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea, to Bethlehem, the town of David, because he belonged to the house and the line of David. He went there to register with Mary who was engaged to him and was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for the baby to be born, and she gave birth to her firstborn, a son. She wrapped him in cloths and placed him in the manger because there was no guest room available for them. Can I have you stand again? Hymn number. 
number 191, verses 1 and 4. And there were shepherds living out in the fields nearby, keeping watch over their flocks at night. An angel of the Lord appeared to them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid. I bring you good news that will cause great joy for all people. Today in the town of David, a Savior has been born to you. He is the Messiah, the Lord. And this will be a sign to you. You will find a baby wrapped in cloth and lying in a manger. Suddenly, a great company of the heavenly host appeared with the angel, praising God and saying, if you look in your program all together, glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace to those on whom his favor rests. And now, rise again. We'll sing angels we have heard on high. We'll sing verses one and three. One ninety seven. Left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, 
Let's go to Bethlehem to see this thing that has happened that the Lord has told us about. So they hurried off and found Mary and Joseph and the baby who was lying in the manger. When they had seen him, they spread the word concerning what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds said to them. But Mary treasured up all these things and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned glorifying and praising God for all the things that they had heard and seen, which were just as they had been told. After Jesus was born in Bethlehem in Judea, during the time of King Herod, Magi from the east came to Jerusalem and asked, Where is the one that has been born King of the Jews? We saw his star when it rose and have come to worship him. And once again, all rise. Hymn number 161, first two verses. When King Herod heard this, he was disturbed in all Jerusalem with him. When he had called together all the people's chief priests and teachers of the law, he asked them where the Messiah was to be born. In Bethlehem in Judea, they replied, for this is what the prophet has written. But you, Bethlehem, in the land of Judah, are by no means least among the rulers of Judah. For out of you will come a ruler who will shepherd my people, Israel. Then Herod called the Magi secretly and found out from them the exact time the star had appeared. He sent them to Bethlehem and said, Go and search carefully for the child. As soon as you find him, report to me so that I too may go and worship him. After they had heard the king, they went on their way, and the star they had seen when it rose went ahead of them until it stopped over the place where the child was. When they saw the star, they were overjoyed. On coming to the house, they saw the child with his mother Mary, and they bowed down and worshiped him. Then they opened their treasures and presented him with gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Then, having been warned in a dream not to go back to Herod, they returned to their country by another route. 
Amen. Well, thank you, children. And again, Bryce and Melanie. Thank you, Kelly and Barb. Now we're going to have a time of candle lighting. And just like the star that those wise men saw, you too will get to bear a little bit of light tonight. It's the light of Christ that each of you can shine. You'll shine it not only with a little candle tonight, but the challenge will be to shine this light every day, not just Christmas Eve, not just Christmas Day, but in the days to come with the light of Christ that shines from your life. So as a symbolic act of worship and obedience, I'm going to invite you now, uh, one row at a time, to come on up as Kelly and Barb will play. Uh, I will demonstrate proper candle lighting with Bryce. You'll notice the lit candle stays straight. The unlit candle tilts. Okay? Pretty simple. Um, we're going to have you come forward, light off of either Bryce's candle or my candle. And then uh, we're going to have you encircle the entire sanctuary. Now, the way it usually works, people will begin to go around the outer aisles on both sides. Then, as the sanctuary continues to move forward, uh, you'll come down the center. We may even need to fill up uh, the pulpit area as well. Again, if your candle goes out for some reason, uh, just feel free to light it off the person beside you. All right? Let's enter this time of worship together.
Let's pray together. Oh Lord, we thank you that you came into this world to be the light. Thank you that you have passed the light on to us. And now you shine through us. On this dark night, Lord, I pray that you would bless us. That you would ignite us with your love and with your joy as we celebrate your birth tonight and tomorrow and for the rest of our lives. Thank you for the gift that you are to us, Lord Jesus. And it's in your name we pray. Amen. Well, thank you so much for coming out tonight. I would invite you to bask in the glow of your little light as long as you wish. And when you're done, please blow it out. And you may put the candle and the holder in the buckets in the, in the back, outside the, the back doors of the sanctuary. Again, thank you so much for coming tonight. God bless you, and Merry Christmas. Amen.